This video reviews technical nuances for the balloon within Gasserian ganglion for compression rhizotomy. The trigeminal nerve is perhaps best known for the extreme pain of trigeminal neuralgia, often described as one of the worst pain that can afflict a human being. Percutaneous procedures for trigeminal neuralgia involve control of damage to the trigeminal nerve root with the goal of relieving pain. These procedures are performed via foramen ovale puncture. We are going to use the case of a man in his 40s who presented with a left-sided V2 and V3 medically fractured trigeminal neuralgia. We start with a brief review of the microanatomy leading to the case. This mid-sagittal resection demonstrate the dissection of the mucus cave and the cavernous sinus on the left side after removing the periosteal layer of the dura mare. Placement of the needle on the medial section of the ramen allows the balloon to make the most contact with the trigeminal root and enter the trigeminal system. Trigeminal nerve leaves the lateral surface of the pulse and across the apex of the petrous bone where it is then expanded at trigeminal ganglion. The ganglion is the mucus cave of the trigeminal depression onto our medial to trigeminal prominence. From this sensory ganglion arise its three division of thalmic V1, maxillary V2, and mandibular V3. Halter's anatomic landmarks are used for skin entry and the needle trajectory. The skin entry point is 2.5 cm lateral to the corner of the mouth. The second point is 3 cm anterior to the external auditory canal. The third point is medial ipsilateral papal. The needle trajectory is aimed at the intersection of two planes. One sagittal plane passes through the ipsilateral papal and the older coronal plane is 3 cm anterior to external auditory meatus. Here we are preparing the procedure for thin gauge needle used to create the stab incision for the trocar. Here is the 4 Fogarty on belectomic catheter. The needle typically goes away farther than the tip of the trocar, and we have to make sure to mark the steely of the needle in the correct location. So the operator does not advance the needle too far beyond the tip of the trocar. Contrast agent is used to fill the umbilectomy fogarty cutter balloon to assure correct location of the balloon within Gasserian ganglion. Now we have to mark sure that all the air bubbles are removed from the volume of the contrast fly. So when the balloon's alone is inflated within the Gasserian ganglion, the accurate location of the balloon is assured. The patient is placed supine on the operating table with the neck curl to achieve a 15 to 20 degree neck extension. The biopsy needle is now advancing in the Gasserian ganglion using standard technique. Here is how the skull and trigeminal nerve is really overlaid over the head of the patient in the same position, obviously as the patient. And you can see how it would be great with experience to image in the frame and based on the landmarks of the eye and internal auditory meatus. The surgeon places his finger in the oral cavity to ensure that the buccal mucosa is not perforated during needle leaf advancement and to palpate the pterygoid process since the foramen leaves are to this landmark.
That is the initial large skull x-ray. You can see that the needle should be pointed at the junction of the petrous bone and the clivus. This area is the ideal point for the tip of the needle to be pointed at. This is the most important landmark on the lateral phyloscopy image guiding the surgeon to reach the foramen. Next, the Fogarty curl is placed in the calcarean ganglion and under life phyroscopy, the balloon is inflated. You can see an adequate shape of the balloon and the nice movement of the petrous rage. We usually inflate the balloon with about 0.6 cc of contrast. The balloon remains inflated for one and a half minutes and then is deflated and the whole apparatus is removed in one piece and the procedure is completed with a small band over the area of the entry of the needle. Thank you.